Hi, Founder fans. Jason here. And today's founder is Jeremiah Wadsworth, a commissary general of the Continental Army. Now, Wadsworth was from a wealthy Connecticut family who owned a merchant business and therefore several ships. And as a young man, Jeremiah decided to take to the sea. He jumped on one of his family's ships and eventually became captain of one of those ships. He made himself his own tidy little fortune, which he returned to Connecticut with just as the American Revolutionary War was breaking out. Now, as I like to discuss, it wasn't just the Continental Army fighting the British. Each state had its own militia and therefore it was kind of like 13 separate armies plus the Continental Army plus the Green Mountain Boys of Vermont, the French, the Spanish, there were a whole lot of armies fighting the British all at once. And Jeremiah Wadsworth took up the position of, uh, or took up the task of feeding and clothing the Connecticut state militia. Now he did a really good job of this. George Washington took notice. He saw how well provided for the Connecticut militia was compared to other militias in the Continental Army itself. And George Washington, I don't want to say demanded Wadsworth step in, but uh, recommended to Continental Congress he would not take no for an answer and got Jeremiah Wadsworth the job of commissary of provisions for the Continental Army. This was a, uh, it was a deputy comedy commissary of provisions. And in this position, he was in charge of getting the food primarily for the soldiers. Now, about a year goes by, uh, uh, Joseph Trumbull, who was the acting commissary general, resigns. And, well, Jeremiah Wadsworth is appointed in his stead excuse me, in his stead to be comm uh, Commissary General of the Continental Army. Wadsworth does this successfully for about two years uh, until he resigns, though he's not, he doesn't stop for long because just about that time the French show up on in Rhode Island and they need someone to help them get food and clothing and provisions. And Wadsworth, Wadsworth jumps right back in and helps the French make sure the French soldiers, who are so kind to come help the Americans, get fed and not starve to death. He does this for the remainder of the war. Now, I do want to note, uh, Jeremiah Wadsworth makes a fortune in this position. And while this sounds kind of scumbaggy in our modern eyes, it w was common at the time and even expected in a fashion. If you were going to be taking on this position, well, you're trading, buying goods, selling goods for the Continental Army. These dealers uh, are sometimes getting overcharged by people. And you have to figure out all the pricing. And along the way, he did take his cut as the salesman, so to speak. And he makes a vast little fortune there, becoming one of the wealthiest men in Connecticut. But no one was mad at him because he joins the state government. And in fact, eventually when the Constitution comes around and it needs to be ratified, Jeremiah Wadsworth is brought to the Connecticut State Ratification Convention where he does support the United States Constitution. Now, this is fascinating. He's there. He helps ratify the Constitution. Yay, the Constitution's going to happen. So then Jeremiah Wadsworth is elected to the Continental Congress. But wait, you say, I thought we just had the Constitution and replaced the Continental Congress. Well, it takes a little bit for the Constitution to actually come into effect. Jeremiah Wadsworth is one of the handful of people sent to the Continental Congress uh, under the Articles of Confederation for about a year to help the transition from one government to another. It's not so easy just shutting down one government and turning another one on. There's a transition that has to take place. And Jeremiah Wadsworth was one of the people charged with just that. And he seems to have done a pretty good job because immediately Connecticut elects him as one of the inaugural members of the United States House of Representatives. And Wadsworth spends six years of the George Washington administration in the United States House of Representatives before he goes back home and goes to private business. Now, among this private business was purchasing a vast tract of land that takes up essentially all of modern western New York. If you look at a map of New York, looks like kind of a shoe. Well, that part under Lake Ontario, all the way to Lake Erie, the the, to, the middle of the foot out, uh, he owned. And it was during this time that a bunch of discussions went on between the United States government and the um, uh, Native Americans in the era, area, namely the Iroquois Confederacy, although the Iroquois had broken up during the Civil War. That's a that story for a different day, but... Jeremiah had sent a bunch of his nephews out to settle this area, and they were there, and he was chosen, while still a member of the House of Representatives, by President Washington as a peace commissioner. Uh, there was another gentleman chosen first, Isaac Smith. He didn't want to go, so Wadsworth was chosen instead as the owner of the land. He goes out, meets with his nephews, represents the United States of America with these Native American nations, and signs what becomes known as the Treaty of Big Tree, which essentially ceded a, the rest of New York to the Americans, while the Native Americans agreed to 
either relocate or go on reservations. And I know in hindsight, that's not the greatest outcome for the Native Americans. Obviously, there's a lot of sadness to the Native American story in American history, uh, especially with treaties of this nature, which unreasonably seem to favor the Americans. But we should note that these Native Americans had sided with the British in the Revolutionary War, and that war was lost, and the spoils go to the winners, as they say. Uh, and Jeremiah Wadsworth, owning all this land that was now available to settle, a.k.a. sell, was certainly a winner, especially at a time where land speculation was running rampant, and many American founders, very wealthy people, lost their fortunes in land speculation. Jer Jeremiah Wadsworth is one of the lucky few who actually profits off of all this land. He then goes back home to Connecticut, and he spends the next several decades, uh, several years, uh, the remainder of his life, serving on the Connecticut Executive Council, which is kind of a combination of what we would today think as the president's cabinet and the state senate. They were kind of one body at the time. Uh, it was mostly inherited from the uh, royal governor and the English government. Connecticut's early government doesn't change a whole lot uh, from what it was under the royal governor because the royal governor was Jonathan Trumbull and he was the only royal governor to side with the patriots and stick around. So Connecticut's transition is a little bit slower uh, than most states to what we now consider a normal type of state government. So that is the story of Jeremiah Wadsworth, a really wealthy person who did help the Continental Army and the French win the American Revolutionary War. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit like. And if you're new here, subscribe. I talk about the American Revolution seven days a week, and I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow.